Well, once again, welcome to the No One Is Homeless YouTube podcast. You know, we are here because we want to hear the heart of the homeless. And we started this channel, this podcast, so we can begin to listen to those who are out on the streets and hear their heart as to what they go through on a daily basis. And also to bring it forward to say, okay, is there help? Is there hope? And is there light at the end of the tunnel? And so we try to give you both sides, listening to the heart of that homeless person that is still out there and uh, struggling, and also to hear from people that have made that decision to come in off the street. We're actually going today to hear from both. We're going to hear from that homeless person. We're also going to hear from an amazing person that is a community leader but has gone through that process. And so we're going to, uh, right now, uh, well, first of all, I want to uh, introduce and make sure you all know Leanne Navarro. Uh, She is also at The Caring Place. And by the way, the No One is Homeless YouTube channel is sponsored by The Caring Place, and it has famous campuses. One is Miami Rescue Mission in Miami-Dade in Florida, and then Broward also has the Broward Outreach Centers. So uh, The Caring Place is the umbrella over these different campuses and uh, taking care of the homeless on an everyday basis. And Leanne Navarro, you're very much part of all this. You are in charge of helping those who want to come alongside and help with their time, talent, and treasure. And you are one of those uh, directors that just make sure that we co- we communicate with the public. Yeah, I mean, I'm so happy to be here once again. And yes, I am that liaison with the opportunities, with the how can you get more involved, how can you join, how you can come alongside of us, right, to make a difference in our community. Well, and uh, we're going to hear more from you all through the podcast, but right now we want to cut away with an interview um, of one of our staff, Keith uh, Cavanaugh, which is a a director here uh, at The Caring Place, and he is interviewing a man who is still out there on the streets living and trying to, you know, make it all work. And we want to be able to listen to this interview because you're going to hear the heart of this young man who's still out there on the street and is struggling, but, you know, is trying to keep it all together. So let's cut away right now to that interview. So you, are you experiencing homelessness? Yes, I am. And what kind of led you to experiencing homelessness? Following the family. Uh, explain that a little, little bit. Like, what, what does that look like? What does that mean? Uh, I got evicted. My auntie evicted me at my grandma. My grandma passed away. Um, they had power of attorney. I was working at the time, uh, paying them rent. Between paying them rent, they, they paid for my eviction. They sold my grandma's house. They sold the acres. They sold the land. So it put you on the streets. Um, I got a little charge from, um, I was hungry. Well, I want to make a stop right there and just comment. It seems to be, in his case, he is saying it was a financial issue. Um, But Leanne, he made an interesting comment. He said, I was following the family. Now, what do you think that he really meant by that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that he trusted his family, right? But also at the same time got too comfortable thinking they were going to support him or maybe carry him over. That's what I get. Yeah, and then when things went awry, his auntie, you know, passed away, and uh, the house was lost, then he didn't have that comfortable spot, and he said he was working, but he wasn't paying rent, so that was kind of an interesting combo there, Uh, and I think as as we look at, at families, you know, they're trying to help the family, help those that are in need, but it doesn't always end up that way, so let's go on with this interview. So just hearing you out, you had that family relationship break, um, that kind of happened. And then once they evicted you, things kind of spiraled out of control, just trying to fit in, uh, spending some time with people, doing the wrong things. uh, And that that really impacted you where now you find yourself on the street. How long has that been? All about, I did 
probably about two, three years, man, on and off between getting in trouble and coming back out, you know? So what, what's kind of, what is the average day of being homeless? What does that look like? I don't know. We like modern day caveman to me, you know, because I, I keep myself up. So it's not that hard. No, the hardest part is sleeping at night, you know, yeah. hardest part of being being in places. And you look that as as a homeless person or a junkie, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So you just got to take care of yourself, you know, yeah. you know that's what I'm doing. I get I get paid a couple of weeks from now. Find me fantasy if I can't find one. Then I've been adapted to this, you know, save your money, do what you got to do to get where you need to go in life. What did the barriers look like for you to get into shelter? Um, how has it been to trying to get help? On and off, they uh, you got Camilla's house and the missionary that I've been going to. You know, they they feed you, they they clothe you. You have people that that are sheltered there. You know, but but for the ones who when when the when the space is empty, you know, and full, they let you still come feed you, take you a shower. The missionary does the same thing. You know, so that's that, that that's a helpful situation. And if you if you know if you know if you're out here to do what you're trying to do to get back on your feet, then that's how you, you know what I'm saying, that's how you do it. Some people go the other way, they, they take the streets and they take being homeless or however they, they, they got to this point and they use drugs. You know, I just wanted to kind of cut away and say, you know, there is a fine line uh, between helping and enabling. And that is one of the things I think we all struggle with as we try to help people. Um, what are we doing to actually help them and what are we doing to actually it ends up enabling them and they are not they're not becoming independent and as you listen to this young man you kind of uh, feel that that that's a struggle there uh, where family in the past you know did help but maybe was that enabling and even as a ministry the caring place we we also look at that you know we we are also feeding people every day giving out clothes showers all those type of things and uh we don't want to become an enabler we do want to help and we look at it more like we're enticing those to come to us that need help so that we can introduce to them uh that independence and uh, so but it is a struggle i just want to put that out there there there's there's a fine line and uh, there's not always clear cut um, answers to that, and I think we all struggle with that. So let's continue and, and listen to this interview. Prior to us recording, you were talking a little bit about your family dynamics and that you got a child. Um, when's the last time that you spent time with your son? Before I got locked up, you know, listening to family, I probably won't ever got locked up. And me and my baby mama and my family, we probably, you know what I'm saying, by this time, we'd have been together with a better co parent situation, you know? You bringing that up prior to we talking, your son's very important to you. If, if there was a shelter that was out there that was willing to bring you in, to help you, to give you services, to mentor you, pour into your life, make you a better father, and help you to become the best version of yourself, would you be willing to take advantage of that type of program? I would, you know, I would. But like I said, at a certain time, after you do it for so long, after you live, after you live in the streets, you adapt to where you live at, you know what I'm saying? So, so... Well, you heard what he said. He used the words, he said, I would, but. There is the essence, but. Uh, many times, and if you've ever talked to a homeless person on the street, and you, you say to them, um, do you want help? Would you like to get off the street? And at first they say, oh, yes, 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 I would. And then if you give them an answer, like right there and then, well, right now we have a van, you know, to bring you in. Uh, you can start to get your help and hope. And then comes the but. <laughs> and, you know, it just means that they say they want help, but really down in their heart, they're not ready for that structure. And I think this young man also has a problem with that. He feels the freedom. Uh, he feels that, you know, the no rules. And even though he doesn't exactly want to be homeless, but at the same time, he doesn't want to be under authority. So that's really the but. The but is, I don't want to be under authority. I want everything exactly my way, but, but um, I don't want to be under authority. But that doesn't mean we give up. Uh, we continue to reach out and we continue to invite uh, people in. And you're going to hear a little later uh, in this podcast from someone, it took a long time, but the but 
finally went away, and they finally did want help and hope. So um, we don't. We know we don't give up on anyone. In essence, he wasn't ready to be accountable. We came out here today. You probably were not thinking about getting into shelter. You were thinking about surviving. Um, have you had any kind of interaction with anyone else that has provided you with opportunity to get off the streets and to, to really gain shelter opportunities? No. No, you're the first one. So it's good. It's good that you guys are doing that. Hey, girl, you got people out who really need that. Yeah, so last but not least, we're getting ready to have a birthday bash. I don't know when your birthday is, but would you like to celebrate with us, um, get a birthday cake, get some giveaways, and, and just come out and, and um, be loved on, be seen, be noticed, be celebrated. And, and would you mind, like, even we can celebrate uh, with, the, with the cupcake and sing you happy birthday today? <laughs> that would be cool, man. You know, that would be cool, bro. Man, I appreciate, appreciate so much your time, man. If you're interested in coming to our program, let's, let's focus on the birthday. And if you want, we'll get you into the shelter today. All right, God bless, man. Thank you so much. Well, you know, the good news and bad news. The good news, we made the offer, and he did say yes. Uh, the bad news is we had the van there. We're only a mile away from where he could have been part of a wonderful birthday celebration. But the bad news is he did not get into the van and he did not come and and that's that's the heartbreaking part of it uh, my heart's been broken so many times or thinking that oh my gosh we've reached out reached out reached out to this one person they seem like that they got it now they're coming in um, or they have come in and they're starting the program and then all of a sudden uh, they're not there or they did not accept the invitation to come. They said yes, but then didn't do it. See, there, there has to be action along with the verbal. You verbally say yes, and then there has to be action. But the main thing is, is that we have to keep trying. We have to keep doing this. And I've learned in the 22 years that I have been working with the homeless and the hurting and the needy is that uh, you keep asking. And uh, there are countless hundreds of people that have been helped. And Actually, we were inviting him to a wonderful, bombastic birthday party. Um, I actually started this many, many years ago, around 2007, and it, it just really hit, and it just has become one of the icons here at the Caring Place. Uh, they, they get so much, and I don't want to take away from Leanne, who's really involved in putting this all together, and two campuses, you have to oversee it all. And make sure that it's wonderful and exciting. So, you know, you, your job could be easy if you just said, hey, we're, I just need to ask donors to help give uh, for meals. Um, I don't have to do anything extra. We feed 365 days. Isn't that enough? I'm not going to ask you, Leanne, why? Why do you go to all this trouble? You know, that's a good question. It's, it's yet another opportunity to reach out to them right, to invite them and, and to say, you know what, it's not only the meal today. Today we're going to give you, you know, for the birthday we had gifts because it's a birthday celebration. We had cupcakes. We had candles that they were, you know, we were singing happy birthday. Um, we had volunteers with the most beautiful smiles, uh, you know, taking pictures, celebrating with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have countless individuals that say to us, Today is my birthday. Do we <laughs> know okay. that? Is, is that always true? Um, but they feel it, right? Yeah. They feel Even the, the ones that it's not their birthday. They feel the celebration. So it's yet another opportunity to say, let me give you something more, right? We have pastors that come to deliver a message wow. who tell them in the case of the birthday celebration, this is about, you know, you know your your new birth, right? right. It's a new life. Let's, let's help you get there. Wow. And... Um, Yes, it was beautiful. We decorated the center, balloons, centerpieces. Uh, everything was very festive, and the food was amazing, and the cupcakes. And I really wish that this young man would have joined us. Yes, yes. But you know something? There's always more events that you plan, and we're feeding every day. He may come another day. That's one thing also that I've learned, Leanne. Just because someone didn't come on the day that you invited them doesn't mean that they're not going to come. In fact, more than likely, he's going to remember it, and he's going to think, you know, I missed that. Hmm. I wished I had come. I should have gone. And then he finally gets to that place where um, he's ready, and, and that's a, it's a mindset. Uh, that person, all of us, and anything that we do in life, 
We have to have the mindset that that's what we want and mm -hmm. we want to do it. Even if you're going back to school, you know, you have to have the mindset. Yeah. You have to say, you know something, I'm going to have to study. I'm going to have to work hard. Am I ready for that? And uh, being under authority is a big issue uh, for many of the homeless as they come in for that help and help. I mean, they have to kind of sacrifice their independence as homeless versus being under authority in a place that can give help or hope. But we never, uh, we never give up or stop asking on those things. Yes. Well, Leanne, that's why uh, we want to show you on the other side of the coin. Uh, and I have a wonderful interview that I've actually done. Um, I, I really call him a son, uh, a son in the faith, a, a, a son that has come into the mission many, many years ago. And uh, he was one of those that had a hard time saying, I want to uh, sacrifice my independence, but I need help and I need hope. But he finally did that. I have with me in, in the studio, um, I've already pre-recorded uh, this particular interview, but I want you to hear it with Anthony Durden, and he is a successful man in the community, but he has a story to tell about how he came as a homeless person into our centers, went through the regeneration program, and we're basically, we're asking him, can you tell us uh, about the barriers about the homeless? What are the barriers? Why is it that when you when you offer somebody, we think the best thing they can be offered, hey, listen, we're going to help you get your education. We're going to help you with uh, shelter, clothing, food, all that. And we're going to help you learn to have the tools also to be successful. And a person then doesn't do it. And it's so hard on those who want to help, but then are... We keep getting the no. It's like sales, you know. You get all the no's, but you know eventually you're going to get the yes. So let's cut away uh, to that interview. Well, here on the No One is Homeless uh, YouTube podcast, you know, we try to always emphasize talking to people on the street, but I have the joy of being with someone who's been on both sides of the fence. I have yes. with me today Anthony Durden, um, this man is very special uh, in my heart, and I've known him for so many years. And you can really talk about uh, the barriers yes. of what, what stops that homeless person from making that step and saying, I want help, I, yes. I, I need hope. Um, and you see here at the Caring Place, uh, we are feeding people yes. every day. They're lined up. Yes. And... You know, what's frustrating yes. uh, for the staff many times is, well, why don't you come into a life-changing program? Yes. And yet you see those same faces over and over. But we don't give up, give up hope. Yes. We're not giving up, right? And, and that's what I tell all of our supporters. If, you know, if you're listening to us right now, uh, if you know about work, um, we are always going to tell you that. We are not giving up, right? This is the reason why not only do we feed every day, uh, we offer them a chance to take a shower, we give them the clean clothes, uh, we give them everything we can, uh, but we also do these special events, right? Like the bombastic birthday celebration, uh, like the Thanksgiving event, Christmas in July, cr you know, the Christmas event, the Good, Good Friday. Friday. Yeah, so I mean, many. there's so many events, right? Uh, because we try to give them always a little more than the usual. And we know that it takes a minute for some of them to be ready. Right. I've heard so many stories yes. of it took me five years, it took me 20, it yeah. took me 10. Um, and we just want to be there when that happens. That's right. We want to be there. <laughs> because we do know yes. that many times someone does make that choice. But we want to emphasize right now and uh, try to understand and let the public understand what are the barriers of that person who's out there who says, okay, I know where to get food and I'll eat the food, but yes. I, I'm not going to make that decision to, to do the next step. Yes. So to talk to us about that. Yes. I think for an individual that's in that situation, I would just apply it to myself. I'm saying that it took me 20 years plus until I walked through the doors of the Miami Rescue Commission. There was a journey. There was a process. I had to hit my head a few times. I had to go through different experiences until I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so, and you weren't homeless through that whole time. No, 
no, absolutely not. So you not. can't say that you were out there on the streets all that time. There was some incarceration. Absolutely. And, but there were times when you were homeless. Yes, yes. In those days when you were really homeless, what was the barrier during that time? I think the barrier for most people in this situation, that could be, it could be mental. It could be, you know, sometimes people lost, lose will uh, to want to go to the next step. Maybe they're only comfortable with just getting food. Okay, I know there's some services there. Um, I could stay out here. I don't have to really fall up under no sort of structure. I can kind of do my own thing. And that, that, that gives them a level of freedom, right? So I think when they're, they're, they're thinking, they could be thinking, oh, I'm giving up my freedom. You know what I'm saying? I don't have anybody bothering me. I don't have to follow any rules, any guidelines, any regulations, because a lot of times when you approach anyone in that situation, you don't know what their state of mind is. And sometimes it could be, you know, uh, like I say, it could be something mental. And so I think what us as. Now, when you say mental, mm -hmm. that, that's such a gamut yes. of what that means. Yes. It, that could be depression. Absolutely. That that could mean that uh, I'm not able to think that far ahead. Yes. I mean, and and so we find in the environment we're in right now, I would say in society. Yes. There is a lot of that mental issue. And I always say it's like the chicken and the egg. I don't know which came first. Was it addiction or mental illness or was it mental illness and addiction? Absolutely. Um, which came first? Yes. And, and you could go round and round about that. Yes. But how do we break that how do we how do you talk because you're out there anthony yes. you are a community change maker yes uh you're the president of sheer inc yes. uh you're also part of the circle of brotherhood and yes. you are making changes in your own community you're not just sitting on the on the sidelines saying well i hope it changes right you're in the middle of it uh talk to us a little bit about how how do you talk to someone who's on the street and if god says to you hey this person i want you to speak to yes uh, what do you say i just start talking about my experience like i just start kind of like walking them through some of the processes that that that, that helped me get to where i am because when they see me they don't know that i've been through what i've been through. right right and so when they they get that shock that oh you was homeless oh you was on crack yeah. you know um it opens them up to receive what you have to share so that's how we call that a testimony um, and so I apply a lot of my uh, ministry with just things that I've experienced. And so uh, I'll walk them through that. But then I'll, I'll see some of the barriers that could be potential barriers yes. where um, they might not be ready for what I had gotten mm -hmm. right now. Right. Like just a conversation. I, we call it a seed. Sometimes you yes. could just be a seed planter yes. and let God do the watering because it's not my process. It's God's process. And so, uh, so can I say that we yeah. need a lot of seed planters out there? Absolutely. Yes. You need more seed planters. Talking about planting a seed, right? I mean, we're all about that. And if you're thinking, how can I do that, right? We want you to come alongside of us. We want, to, we want you to plant a seed mm -hmm. by learning more about the work that we're doing, by serving as an ambassador, as becoming a monthly donor, maybe a one-time donor. I don't know. I mean, whatever your heart tells you to do. We have volunteer opportunities. We have many ways of, you know, for our community to get involved. We want you guys to know that 365 days a year, you can make a difference, right? And I know not always, it's not always going to be time. It's not always going to be that you can go to a store and buy the items that we need, but maybe it's easy for you to make a donation with a credit card, send a check in the mail, come alongside of us to continue to plant those seeds in our community. You know, because again, we can't get caught up on what I want to happen in my time and my logic and what I'm thinking that, that they need. Right. Because that might not be what they need. Yes. Um, they may need something else. Or they're not ready for and they that might, yet. Exactly. Exactly. So I don't I don't try to press nobody to uh, make that immediate change. I just I just try to plant a seed. Now, if they're ready to go and I'm saying, are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? Because this is going to be a journey. And then they say they're ready. Then that's when I extend more help. Right. But until that point. If they don't want to be bothered, I see that they're short. They don't really 
I pray for you and I keep it moving. Yeah. Because I just plant that seed and keep sometimes it moving. Sometimes what I see is, is as our staff goes out, volunteers also, mm-hmm. um, I, I tell them, well, get them to the point to say they're ready because and then, then the test comes. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're ready, there's a van right here that Absolutely. you can get in. Yeah. Yeah. And then you see, well, are they ready or not? Because right. then the excuses could start happening. Or they might say, oh, my gosh, right. Right. I, I will come. Right. So you never know. Right. I find that as ambassadors, we have to be ready at all times to be able to accept that person to be able to come in. Right. You know, I say strike while the iron is hot. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you ever seen a person that's out in there, maybe at the expressway, and you're at the light? Yes. And they're saying they're hungry. And you're like, okay, I'll take you to get something to eat. And they're like, no, can you give me a few dollars? Yes. yes. See, our prejudice is to say... No, I'm going to give you what I think you should have yeah. versus giving them what they're asking for. Right. That's God's work. Yes. I let God do the, I don't, I can't judge what they're going to do with the money. That's just, that's just could be my own selfishness yeah. of, you know, just prejudging what they're going to do with the money. I've been on both sides of yeah. that one. Yeah. It, and I've, I've actually, I have to say I'm, I'm guilty. Yeah. I have said, we, well, we guilty. I will take you. Yes. And they say, oh no, just yeah. give me the money. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've I've done both. Absolutely. You know that's why I like our little cards that says you are worth it. Yes. And then as I give that to them, I say here's your free meal. Yes. And there's more help and hope. Yes. Um, if you come to where it says. Yes. And you will get a free meal. Just bring in your ticket. They yes. really don't have to have the ticket, but yes. it's something about having that in your hand. And you've done your service. Yes. Yes. And, yes. and I tell them always. I always ask for their first name. Yes. And I say I'll pray for you. Wow. Yes. So plant, they plant seeds. Plant that seed. Yes. And uh, you may see that person again. You may not. Yes. Uh, I had one particular man tell me that somebody had given him a card three times, three different people. Wow. And he finally said, I think God's trying to tell me something. Mm. And he came in. He graduated the program. Yes. So the, the premise is don't give up. Absolutely. Don't give up in reaching out. Absolutely. And keep talking. Keep extending that olive branch of, of hope and, and just let God do the water. And, and, yeah. Well, Anthony, I just want to tell you that I, I, I just, I love you so much. Love you too. And um, what you're doing in the community is amazing. And uh, don't stop. Uh, don't I know stop. that you have got a circle of brotherhood that yes. is really a brotherhood. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Uh, you guys are movers and shakers. And I believe that there is hope for our community. And I know that God is going to bless you. Um, and your territory is going to be extended. Thank and you. Uh, so I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you too, Mom. Okay. Thank God. you for raising me up and training me in the way that I should go. Thank you so much. <laughs> Amazing. God bless you. God bless you too. And you know, that's right. The last thing that I said in that interview with Anthony, you do not know who you are talking to when you are talking to that homeless person or that person that is in need, you know, that person right then, whoever you're trying to help might say, yes, I want that help. And wonderful, man, that is, that's the day you're, you're always praying for. Uh, but you also might be talking to someone who like that young man said, um, uh, I would come in. Yes, I am coming in. And then said, but no, or said, and then said no, and didn't get in the van. So, But the one thing that you have to keep in the back of your mind, you have to keep asking. I know it's like a salesperson. You know, they get a lot of no's. Yes. But they are looking for the one yes. And that's what we're constantly looking for. We're looking for that one yes. And Leanne, I got to give you kudos (sighs) because you continue uh, to do the outreaches. You continue uh, to make it easy. Yes. For that person to say yes, but you don't give up when they say no. Yes, we do not give up. We are not going to give up and we want you not to give up. So if you want another way of planting a seed, we have this amazing card that our media department have put together. You are worth it card is what we call it. And we want you to ask us for it. Because we can give you a few and you can try it out to see how it goes. But you can actually give this card with the information to the homeless people that you are seeing on your way to work, maybe on your way back from home, from work. Uh, give them the card. Give them a way to find help. 
Yeah, that's right. And uh, you can go to uh, the website, uh, caringplace.org slash volunteer. Leanne, you always know uh, about everything that comes through that particular landing page. And uh, you have a team that is looking at it. And if they say, hey, I, li I listened to the No One is Homeless uh, podcast and I I saw that, and so I wanted to contact you. And we're going to ask you right now, please, uh, help this No One is Homeless YouTube podcast to keep going forward because we want to hear the heart of the homeless. We want to be those helpers, those ambassadors out, those, those seed planters uh, that are planting the seed to help people uh, to have a successful and uh, a life that can go on. And we, we always pray for this. We are a praying place. We're called the caring place. Place, but we're also a praying place because we know that God can make that difference. And every person that decides to say, okay, I'm going to sacrifice my a little bit of independence and come under some authority, but it's going to give me help and give me hope. So on this uh, podcast, please subscribe, um, like, like us, right? <laughs> Ring the bell. Um, all the things that people ask you to to do, share, share would be very wonderful because then other people start listening. And uh, as we, we're going to continue, we're going to continue these and we're going to let you hear the heart of the homeless. We're going to go right to the streets and we're going to listen to them. That's a lot of times they're bypassed. Everybody wants to help and nobody listens to them. So let's listen to them. Let's listen to what they're struggling through, but let's also talk about the successes. So once again, subscribe to the No One Is Homeless YouTube podcast, and we'll see you on the next one. Hi, my name is Anthony. I just want to say that the Miami Rescue Mission has been a turning point in my life. It's given me new direction, um, spiritually, mentally, I'm grateful for the bed that I have to sleep in, the roof over my head, and the food. I'm very grateful to the donors for making this possible. I hope that you'll continue to support the Miami Rescue Mission and help so many people like myself. And I just want to say thank you to each of you. Thank you very much.